Hey, this is uh, um, PGM 98387 over here on the uh, Spanaway, Washington. I know um, some of you may have seen um, two other videos I had posted earlier that were um, about my water catchment system. And I realized into, the, into those two videos I was playing music in the background and I had already had one strike against me on this account because I had someone else's music playing and I didn't have their permission. So I had to take those down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over again what I propose to do and redesign um, some ideas I've been kind of thinking about doing to improve the water system that I have. To make it so that during a heavy rain those pipes they just won't fill up and spill over the side. The, there will be enough throughput in, a ca in the catchment system so where those tanks will fill quickly it won't the water won't back up so what I'm going over now are some sketches of, that I've made of the tanks and the uh, and the piping system that I'm thinking about putting in place I'll be using um, two inch PVC pipe of this kind here and what I'll do is I'll use those elbows and then I'll have this a fitting similar to this on the end and that will, I'll drill a hole through these caps and then I'll cap the, uh, the catchment pipe which takes the, the place of the downspout pipes or the downspouts which is a sewer pipe here which, or drainage pipe. And this is what I'm using right now in the four corners of my roof. The problem I'm having is that um, the rainwater, this is my, the problem I have is overflow in a heavy rain. So water volume during intense downpours, um, it floods faster than it drains. So what I want to do is install a 2 inch uh, PVC piping to fill the tanks, increase in the fill rate during the heavy rain. Uh, fit pipes without cement for movability or redesign for assembly, disassembly during freezing weather. Install clean outs, make it easy to uh, attach and detach. And I think what I'm going to do is have a, have a primary tank that's used for the first fill. So the rain will fill this first, or this, and then it will, this one will be a little higher than this one. And then this one will spill into the second one that will have another filter in it, like a swimming pool filter. Uh, a swimming pool filter here and a swimming pool filter here and then I will uh, make that a float filter and then it will, it, it will, it will, it will, it will, um, the filter, the inlet will be suspended off the water line from the top and then that will spill off and be filtered through a reverse osmosis and then this tank will fill um, via reverse osmosis. Um, and that way I can use this for potable water if I have to and it will be keep, keep that clean if I want to do that. It might be it might be just enough to put a carbon filter and then a pump or a charcoal filter in in in, in line with this larger green tank the thousand gallon tank uh, so where these um, downspout pipes that are on the four corners of my roof uh, right now there's a garden hose that that's on a brass fitting similar to this which was the first one of my first ones I used this small um, for a toilet repair. You see that opening is too small to allow for a high volume of water to flow through during a heavy rain. So what I want to do is I want to use I want to use like this size this size pipe here and that will have you know a gasket and then it will it will it will it will fit through this which will rest on top of it. So the weight of this and the column of water inside will push this push this down and force it to force it to pinch off on the gasket. And then I might have a screen, just a regular plastic screen here in between the, uh, the, fill, the fill pipe and then the drainage pipe and then the elbow. And then I'll have this, you can see I'll have the fitting, you know, how I have it slip or press fit into the bottom of the, of the catchment pipe. So what it will be is the system, right now I have a garden hose here. 
and then I have a, uh, a three-way garden hose manifold here that all of these pipes they have hoses coming off the bottoms of them garden hoses and they connect up to that and so I want everything to fit together snugly and tightly enough not to allow leaks but not too tight to where I can't pull the PVC uh, the T's and the elbows off if I have to disconnect the system or if I want to disconnect it and move it or clean it that was my that was my intention to begin with was that instead of having a barrel on the side you know you have a barrel in the corner you just have the pipe which is discreet you can't really see it that it's a rain rain catchment system there's no and have that connect up to these tanks and the, these tanks can be they can be put in a with a fence around them. I'm going to build a fence around these tanks and have them, um, you know, so they're not visible from the street. And what I need to do is build a platform, raise the two black tanks to the height so that the top of the tank is at the same height, one of the tanks is at the same height of the inlet where the downspout starts at the top. That way I can get a, 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 a maximum amount of pressure off the first tank. And then that second tank will be a spillover tank. That'll, that'll, so the first tank will catch most of the dirt and any debris, any leaves or any bugs or anything like that will go into the first tank. And the second tank I'll have, it, I'll have a, a mild filter off the second tank. And then the third tank I'll have another filter. And so the water by the time it gets into that big green thousand gallon tank, it will be pretty clean. It's just I'm I'm really having a difficult time figuring out how I'm going to um, how I'm going to have it so that I can in the winter time I can have this and close this off so it doesn't fill with water and then this this will freeze. It's okay if this downpipe and then it'll just I can have it drain to the side during when it's freezing weather and then it freezes and thaws out. I'll have it drain to the side so that it won't fill this and then freeze oh, freeze up because that'll break the pipes if it freezes and they're all above everything's above ground and then I can put you know shutoffs I'll have those of course this is a one inch but I'll have a two inch here and here and then this will drain and I'll have this empty in the winter but I'll keep the tanks full I talked to the manufacturer plastic dash mart and they said that on their website that they never tanks never have a problem they can be full of water and freeze and they won't split or crack it's these fittings that do that so I'll probably just put some insulation or in somehow insulate these these um, bulkhead fittings that's my plan for that and I was going to mention about the solar I showed you those other panels that I have what I want to do is I'm using some of the information from here. Um, this magazine is really good for if you're interested in solar. Um, I highly recommend you go to your library and try to find if they have this. Otherwise, get a subscription to it. It's, it's really good. Um, here's the, uh, the way that um, the panels mount to the ground that I want to do, but I don't really want to use it. I think this is overkill. And the other, other problem I see with solar uh, fixed in one spot where it's not movable. You see, the problem is you, you put it down and it's stuck. It's fixed there. You cannot take, it would take you a lot of time to take this down. If you had to take this thing down, you know, man, unless you got it in a place that you're never going to get any really heavy winds, you're never going to get anything that might fall on it, and it's going to be in a in an area where it's really secure. There's never going to be you're never going to have to worry about it getting stolen. But in my situation, I want to do this, but I want to make it so I can just kind of take it apart, fold it up, and put it in my shop or my if I have to. And then when I need it, I can just take it out and fold it, unfold it, and, and rack it and put it back up and set it up. Um, the same thing with this. This is, you know, a good idea. It's great, but then you got heavy winds. You got it like, what if a tornado comes, or you get a wind and then you get stuff blowing in the air. So you get stuff flying at these panels, and they're expensive. And if during a heavy, during a storm or during stormy weather, 
you want to be able to run outside, you want to be able to get up on a ladder and, just, and really quickly pull this down, put it, store it, or fold it up somehow so that you can put it away. <laughs> if, you know, if there's a, you know, some kind of a civil unrest or something like that, people are going to come and steal these. So you got to have them secure. Or if there's a big storm and there's shit blowing around in the air, you don't want, you know, stuff blowing into this. But it, mounting ground mounting is, I think, a good thing because you can get to it. It's, it's accessible. You got, you know, and there's a roof mounting system in here they go over, which I put a mark. Here it is. This is for a newer house. This is for brand new construction. Uh, tells you step by step how to how to roof how to do a roof mount. Uh, this is the kind that I would do on my roof. But again, I mentioned about the loading, um, how much weight you know you have, you know, 200 pounds of metal and glass and on your roof, you know, with the rails and the wiring and the panels. By the time you get everything up there, it's a lot of weight. So you want to make sure that your your roof will be able to support that. And then you got a snow load to worry about. So if the manufacturer of your house you know, barely made the roof to be able to support a load. And I wouldn't, you know, that's the problem. You got all that, you got all that space up on your roof that's available to use, but you got your homeowner's insurance. You got, you know, your neighborhood, you know, CC and R's. I've mentioned that in another video. So, you know, and then you got, if you have to take it down, you got to go up on your roof and you got to pull it down. But if you're, you know, if you got a very secure, if you live in a very secure house and neighborhood, you know there's not going to be any civil unrest, or you know there's that you can have your neighbors will watch your house for you if you go on vacation, you know, or you know, or you're, you know, you can, if you know you're never going to get a tornado or a heavy wind that's going to blow something and knock it, knock a tree into it or whatever, you can do that. You can put it on the roof. In my situation, I want a ground mount. I want a ground mount that I can easily take it up, take it off, put it away, and put it back up if I have to. So that's my thoughts on the solar. I'll show you. Um, I think you've seen my tanks before. My apples. I'm getting a lot of apples this year. Getting a lot of uh, trying to grow potatoes too. This wisteria bush. The problem with the tanks is that they're exposed. You see, people will see them from the street, and then they'll wonder what's wrong with him. Is he is he surviving or is he prepping for something? And I told my neighbor, I said, well, if there's ever a fire and there's then the fire hydrants don't work, the fire department's more than welcome to put their hoses into these tanks and suck the water out to put the fire out. <laughs> so these are good to have. They're nice and they're sturdy and they last a long time. And they don't freeze in the winter time. These are made in Indiana, you know, they're made in USA. Here's the uh, fitting on them. So what I want to do is put PVC, two inch PVC line in here instead of these hoses so I get better throughput. Not right now, I'm using these. This is for garden hose, you know, it's just doesn't get a heavy rain and it doesn't fill, you know, it doesn't, it just, there's a lot of resistance through these hoses because it's small size. So I'd like to have these tanks front is to fill first and then the second one will fill. Build a, you know, put a stand there and put a fence around it. Have them go. There's one, you know, there's the porch connection, the middle connection and the, and the connection, the uh, downspout over there on the side. And I'm using this, you know, manifold. So I want to make all this PVC and make it so I can take it apart and put it together if I have to clean it out or move it or whatever. So that's my setup and that's my plan. Anyhow, have a great day. Bye.